In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our beloved fathers, deacons, monks, nuns, our beautiful and beloved congregation who are here with us in this holy church and those who are watching us through live streaming, may the Almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth bless you, guide you, and protect you always. The Gospel of today is according to St. Matthew chapter 20, verses 17 to 28, inclusive. Matthew 20, from verses 17 to 28, inclusive. Throughout all these verses, the Lord Jesus is trying to send a very profound message which is vital for our Christian life and our spiritual life. And this profound message is how to learn to be humble. How to learn to be a humble Christian. We are going through the Great Lent. It's a very holy and blessed times. The Great Lent, the 40 days fasting, is to teach us one thing, humility. To learn how to be humble. See, the Lord Jesus was speaking or addressing his disciples and other people around. And he said, it's written about me that I'll be handed over to the authorities and the high priests and they will hand me over and I'll be judged and then eventually I'll be crucified and then I'll be buried on the third day I'll rise from the dead this woman who happened to be a mother the mother of James and John the sons of Zebedee she ran like every mother would normally do two of her sons are followers of the Lord Jesus not only followers but part of the 12 apostles so when she heard the Lord saying I am leaving the mother's instinct came into play naturally what does every genuine mother do she thinks of her children, number one, first. She puts them before herself. So she ran to the Lord Jesus and said, before you go, I beg you, guarantee a place for my sons. Give him a future, give him a job, give him a place before you leave. Can you please put my two sons on either side of you in your glory. The Lord looked at her, realizing her intention were of, was of good origin, but the delivery of that request was incorrectly stated. He said, women, I'll grant you your wish, but my way, I, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, not your way, because what you're asking you have no idea what you're saying. He turned to the disciples. He said, the cup which I am about to drink, will you drink? The baptism which I will be baptized with, are you going to be baptized with it? All of them said yes, yet none of them understood what the Lord was saying. And then the Lord came back and said, the cup, that I'm about to drink you will drink also and the baptism you will be baptized also but for you to sit at my right hand and left hand in glory it is not mine but my father to whom he wishes to give you see the woman the mother did not understand what was the glory of Christ because if she had understood what is the glory of Christ, she wouldn't have asked for it. The glory of Christ is the cross. 
So she was literally saying, yet not knowing, can you please crucify them on either side of you? He said, women, do you want your sons to be thieves? But I will grant you your wish. I'll put them in my glory, my way. Saint James was beheaded in Jerusalem, the first martyr ever out of the 12 apostles. He was beheaded for the sake of the Lord's name in Jerusalem. And John the Beloved was the last one to depart natural death in the island of, uh, of Betmos in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea of Greece. So James went first and John went last on either side of the Lord. But the Lord's glory, not the mom's request. But the Lord said, in the world, those who are in high places, they rule over the masses. But let this not be in the midst of you. For whoever is first, let him be last. And the greatest of all in you, let him be the least and the servant of all. Humility. If you are seeking Christ, you cannot seek places. If you are seeking Christ, you cannot chase after thrones. If you are seeking the Lord, you need to seek Him and Him only. All glory for Him, not for you, not for me. This is why the beginning of the road with Christ is death. Baptism, holy baptism, one of the seven sacraments of the true church of Christ, which he has established with his own blood on Calvary on the cross. It is the holy baptism, the beginning of our journey with the Lord Jesus. What is baptism? In a simple term, it is crucifixion, burial, resurrection. Three steps. I am crucified with the Lord. I am buried with the Lord and I am resurrected in the Lord. So what is baptism? Death, burial, resurrection. The Lord is saying to all of us, if you wish to follow me, my child, if you want to be a true disciple of your Lord Jesus, the first thing you must do is die to your old self in order to live in the new one called Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every problem derives from me. When I seek my own ways, I get into trouble. Every human being, this has got nothing to do with just being a Christian, every human being that does things their way, they end up destroying themselves. Because God is talking here. He doesn't lie. God said it to Adam in the very beginning. Adam, you do it your way. The beginning is good, but the end is evil. This is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Which tree was that tree? You and me, we are the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. When God said, do not eat of it, he was saying, do not rely on yourself, Adam. The moment you start doing things your way, the beginning is good, but the end is evil. And this, what happens with our young boys and girls, our sons and daughters, when they choose to do things their way, the beginning is good, but the end is terrible. When I went out with me mates downtown, brother, the first time, I was, I was being released out of bondage. I was being released out of life imprisonment called home. Mom and dad, Middle Eastern, stubborn, old-fashioned, can't talk to. Every time I go to my dad and I say, I'm going out, you're not going out. 
I talk to my mom east, she answers me west. So I've had enough. I've been suffocating for 18 long years at home. First time, Jono came along and said, mate, what are you doing? The normal reply, as always, nothing, bro. Guys, when you say nothing, say to yourself, what does it mean that I'm doing nothing? Give a definition to nothing. It doesn't exist, you see? You must be doing something. Well, at least you must have been thinking. So it is something. There is no such thing as nothing. Anyway, that was just along the way. So you went out with Jono. And he put you in the car and the big sabufa Habibi was going wa'a wa'a duv duv in the back. And the first time you see downtown Sydney. I've never been to, to the city of the most I've seen was Fairfield Nita City. If you've been down to Fairfield, I don't know. So I've never been downtown. Man, that was, that was living. For the first time, I'll see all the colors. Wow, amazing. No more mom and dad around me nagging, nagging, nagging. I say to my friend, can I jump? He'll say yes. Can I laugh? He'll say yes. Can I say the wrong thing? He'll say yes. Can I drink the wrong thing? He'll say yes. First time ever in my life, somebody says yes, not no. What a life, man. That was good. And I continued with this good. After a while, it became evil. The fun is no longer fun. The sweetness is very bitter and sour. The light became dark. The friend became enemy. The beautiful city became a haunted one. Because I did it my way. Actually, there is a song. And I did it my way. And all the ly lyrics are wrong. All the lyrics of the world are wrong. Don't do it your way, my friend. You'll destroy yourself. You need to do it God's way, the Lord's way. And this God, his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You need to define which God. See, when, when people in America say, we trust in God and may God bless America, it is good, but not good enough. So the next time a president of America stands on that pulpit, and says, God bless America, you better say, Jesus Christ of Nazareth bless America. Otherwise, you are a weak president. You need to say Jesus, not just God. Well, the Hindus have millions. A leaf fall from the tree, that's God. The wind blows, that's God. The cow moves, that's a, well, what is, you need to define. Don't, my son, my daughter, don't do it your way. Go on your knees and cry out to the Lord Jesus, the true divine God, and say, Lord, I came today kneeling before your holy presence, asking you for your way, not my way. What do you want of me to do, Lord? Humility. Humility is the beginning of the road with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We need to die to our old person. I've said this and I'll say it again. The beginning to humility, the beginning to humility is when you and I, I and you, start to see our hearts the way God sees it. This is the beginning to humility. When we start seeing our own hearts the way God sees it. My question to all of us, when God looks at our hearts now, how is he seeing it? 
Well, the Lord Jesus said it. It is not what goes into your mouth that defiles a man, but it is what comes out of a man that defiles the man. It is, it is out of the heart of men all evil comes out. It is out of the heart of them of men all evil comes out when we begin to realize how dark our hearts are how haunted they are they are full of spider webs there are so many dark rooms in there one is called envy the other one jealousy the other one hatred the other one pride the other one, whatever poison it is, we need to confess that my heart and yours are filled nothing with things that offend God. So I need to come and say, Lord, here is my dirty, ugly heart. Take it. I've been chasing after it. I've been feeding it its egos. But it got me nowhere but into mischief, trouble, and destruction. Today, I'm giving up. I'm waving the white flag. I am surrendering, Lord. I'm coming saying, Lord, take my heart and give me your holy, sacred heart. I want to live your way, not my way. So, today... I decided to come uptown, not downtown, brother. Downtown, destruction. Uptown, Jesus Christ. I came to church, not the club. Don't you dare go out of the church and go to the club. I'll come after you. I have red belt in karate. I taught Bruce Lee. Hata hata. I come chop, 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 chop you. Go uptown. See, down is failure. Up is success. What are you going down for? We even say, get down, brother. I'm not getting down, brother. I'm getting up, brother. Humility. Oh. See, the world that we live in has no humility. There is one thing in the world, 100% vividly clear, pride. False glory. That's why the people of the world will never find peace. Will never. No matter how rich they become, no matter how powerful they become, no matter how high they climb, but they will never find peace. They will always be empty. So many billionaires ended up killing themselves because they said, we tried everything under the sun, but nothing nothing filled this void that has been haunting me and killing me for years because my dear friend this void inside of you it takes only god to fill it for you from within not from without you've been trying to fill your void externally by doing this and doing that and going the, here there and everywhere the only way you didn't walk in was jesus you tried everything except the Lord. But until you come to the Lord and bow before Him, repenting your sins, no one will fill that void in you. Because only God can. You know, when we close our eyes, what do we see? Space, don't we? When you close your eyes, it's just a, a space. And this space is endless. Do you see any boundaries to that space? No. Do you see any limits to that space? No. Did you know God put it there? Because He wants to remind you 
that every time you close your eyes you are into an endless void space and this endless space it takes the infinite God to fill no one can but him but that space is inside of you not outside of you when you open your eyes it's totally different the moment you close you see an endless space inside of you because it takes the endless God to fill that endless space his name is Jesus Christ all glory to his holy name amen I pray from the bottom of my heart that the church is always filled with so many beautiful faces for the Lord to be glorified I pray this is always the case may the world be empty and the church be filled may Satan be put to shame and may the Lord be always be glorified listen brother listen mate listen cuz let me tell you next time your friend so-called friend calls you and says let's go out say mate I don't have the time for you why not because I'm going to see the best looking bishop in the world bro and the best looking bishop bro he is not in a clubbing place. He is not downtown. He is in the house of the Lord. His name is Jesus Christ. You want to come with me? Because I'm not going with you. I've done it for too long, for too many, th too many times, but I've lost myself. No more. I'm coming to the house of the Lord. And I will say it with King David. I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. I was glad not saying, oh, not again. No, I was glad not whinging. Mom comes and says, come on, wake up. Let's go to church. Oh, please leave me alone. You go, leave me alone. No, when you hear the word church, you jump. You rejoice. Because I'm going to meet the love of my life. Don't you want to be with the love of your life? Don't you want to be with your sweetheart? Don't you want to be with the one who, who means everything to you? Well, his name is Jesus. Still available. After 2023 years, he's still 33 and kicking baby. I always say to him, Lord, man, you can't be this stunning, breathtaking, handsome young man as a Jew. Normally Jews are not that handsome. Uh, look, I'm being honest. But you're just too handsome for a Jew, man. You blow them away. What a handsome Jewish guy. Speaks all languages. Have an answer to every question. Have a cure for every illness. He is your one stop shop. Everything you need, you find in Jesus Christ. When you say, I'm thirsty, he'll say, I am the living water. He who drinks of me shall never thirst again. When you say, I'm hungry, I am the living bread who descended from heaven. He who eats me shall live in me forever. When you say, I'm lost, I am the good shepherd, seeking the lost sheep, and I found him and brought him back home. When you say, I'm dead, he will say, I am the life and the resurrection. When you say, where I am, where am I, Lord? You will say, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I am all around you, in you and outside of you. I am you, and you are me. Don't ever say, where am I, Lord?
When you have the Lord Jesus, you fear no one, you fear nothing. Because everything matters not. And everyone matters not when you have the Lord. But through the Lord, people are precious. Lives are precious. Life is precious. Everything has a meaning and a purpose when it comes to the Lord Jesus. And in this I'll say the following, and I won't be repeating myself very often. Sometimes repeating things a lot, maybe it's not a good idea. It's not that I am worried or afraid of anything. Nothing worries me. To raise your voice and to say that we're not going to accept something that is against human morals, human values, and human ethics, you have the right to do so. You do it in a respectful way, in a, in a peaceful way, but you have the right to raise your voice. If people wish to choose to live whichever way they wish to live, it's up to them. But they cannot impose their way of living on me. This I will never accept. You want to live whatever way you want to live. That's your choice. But the truth will always be said loud and clear. And I will never be obligated to accept something that is against my Lord Jesus. So as a Christian, over my dead body to come and impose anything against my Lord's teaching and against my faith. So I really don't care who you are and what you are. You will not impose it on me. You will not brainwash my son and daughter, my innocent child, with your evil agendas. You will not. The church needs to wake up. I don't know, I heard this. How true it is, maybe it is. In Melbourne, they already started with a couple of childcare centers, teaching them whatever, the it. And they want to vote to make it legalized everywhere. You need to kill me to, to do what you want to do. Yeah? You need to kill me. And I want to say this for the last time to Albanese. When you went wherever you went, and when you walked wherever you walked, let me, let me correct you. When you said, this is the new Australia, let me tell you one thing. This is the new Australia for you. You do not represent all of Australia. So don't you dare to say, this is the new Australia. Don't. You want to be one of them? Go for it. That's your choice and you'll answer to, you, to God. Whether you believe in Him or not, you will answer to God. Right, listen. When your spirit leaves that body, oh my goodness, I've been there, brother. I've been there, dear friend. I've been there. Albanese, wake up. And whoever is like you, wake up. And more so, so-called church leaders made these cowards. 
cowards. We're leading them to salvation. Ya halawa. You know, sometimes we laugh because it's so sad. <laughs> Honestly, the world is a sad place. People have become so sick, it's sad. But it's so sad, sometimes it's very funny. So you do not represent Australia in this kind of a walk. Do you understand Albanese? So you better take that back and apologize because not all Australians are represented in this whatever you're doing. So how dare you say this is the new Australia? My, the Australia had men that fought for freedom, for dignity, for ethics, for values, for morals. They are called the Anzacs, you little coward. The Anzacs. Men, those who died for Australia's freedom are ashamed of you. Ashamed. Ashamed of you. So don't you include every Australian with this nonsense of yours. You want to go and play in the street? You represent yourself and those who are with you. You do not represent the true Aussies. And definitely you don't represent the Christians of Australia. Definitely you don't. Let's put the prawns on the barbie, mate. Right? I'll leave you with this. <laughs> Sorry, Elias. <laughs> you see, humility, why is the Lord demanding that of all of us? Because it is only through humility we receive wisdom. I'll say that again. It is only through humility one receives wisdom. Wisdom is only given by God. No university levels, no qualifications, no PhDs, nothing, nothing of that. My goodness, there are so many educated church leaders have more than one PhD under their wings, but they are absolute foolish when it comes to Jesus Christ and his house. They have no idea who Jesus is. They have no idea what, ha what his house is all about because they gained knowledge, but they are bankrupt when it comes to wisdom because they chose never to be humble before their master. That's why they, are, they were left blind, ignorant, foolish leaders. Because wisdom only God gives. And God will never give you wisdom until you and I humble ourselves before him. That's why the world is blind, because it is lacking wisdom. There is a lot of knowledge, but no wisdom. That's why it's blind. But when Jesus touches your heart and fills you with his Holy Spirit, he's given you wisdom then and then only. You'll start discerning what is right and what is wrong, where the light is and where darkness is, where the truth is, and where the lie is. It takes God to make you realize. So it is out of his love, is begging all of us to humble ourselves because he wishes to give us his wisdom to be wise like him, knowing everything. So when someone comes and tries to fool us, God, will reveal that this person is lying. Don't believe in him. Come to church always. Amen. Are you going to come again?
Are you sure? What kind of a yes is that? Yes. Can't hear you. Yes. You scared me. <laughs> a skinny guy said to the vet, I just have you heard that joke about the horse and the guy that had a horse? Okay, no worries. I'm running out of jokes, Father. You see, it's okay to yell and after that say a joke. You know, it's all right. With the Lord, it's very different. It's totally different. You're living in the world, but you're not of the world. The Lord make you see everything very clear. We need to pray. Honestly, we need to pray for the Lord to have mercy on His church, His holy apostolic universal church. It is one because the church is His bride. The Lord has one bride. So you can call yourself whatever name you want to call. At the end of the day to the Lord, it's one church. We can divide it. We can call so many names, but to the Lord, it's one. I can show you in paradise, there is no section saying, go here, this is the Catholics. And another section saying here, this is the Orthodox. Doesn't exist. To the Lord in heaven, only one thing. You are the child of God. You belong to Christ, period. There is no names there. The name sees. I can show you. They all live together. Catholics and Orthodox. <laughs> My sweetheart, Pope Cyril VI, Oriental Orthodox from the Coptic Church. Man, this, this man is in the heart of paradise. And Marshar Bel Habib Albi, in the heart of paradise. Saint Nicholas, in the heart of paradise. Saint George. So you can say Saint George belonged to the Greeks. Man, he belongs to the Lord, and all of us do. All of us, we are his family. He died and purchased us with his own precious blood on Calvary. We will all be called Christians. Hallelujah. No more Habibi. But one thing, I will still serve you with tabule there. All the way from Lebanon. And I pray for Lebanon. And for the people of Lebanon. I pray for Syria and the people of Syria. I pray, I pray for Turkey and the people of Turkey. I pray for everyone in every country. For everyone to come and realize there is only one way. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. All right. So now... I ask you all with love and respect, let us bow our heads. Begging the Lord to have mercy on us, to forgive us our sins. And while we're reciting this prayer of absolution, in your heart, confess your sins before the Almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our good God and full of mercy, our good God and full of mercy whose grace and mercy is poured upon all. Pour, my Lord, the compassion of the delightfulness of your love upon your servants, and again transform them in the hope of renewal to the life of repentance. Renew in them your Holy Spirit, by whom they are sealed for the day of salvation. Purify them by your compassion from all flesh and spiritual blemishes, and assure the hope of their faith by the aid of your grace, and instill the walks of their behavior in the paths of righteousness. Please them along with the saints in your kingdom by the assurance of the hope of their faith in the adoption as your children and in the joy of your absolving mysteries. Empower them by the aid of your mercies to observe your commandments and fulfill your will, to confess, worship, and praise your holy name, the Lord of all, Father and Son and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you, and protect you always. Just a couple of announcements, my beloved. 
next Sunday, which is the 19th of March. Um, as per normal, we're celebrating the Holy Mass at 6 p.m. However, next Sunday's Holy Mass will be dedicated for all the Christian souls who passed away due to that earthquake that striked Turkey and Syria. So every Christian soul, we pray for all the souls, Christians and non-Christians alike. But because those Christians are baptized, were baptized souls, they're part of the family. The Holy Mass service is only offered to those who confess and profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So that's why we are offering next week's Sunday Mass, Holy Mass service, to all the souls that have departed due to that tragedy, the earthquake that striked Turkey and Syria. I pray we will see you again next week and we participate and partake in that sacrament of the true body and the true blood of Christ. Um, Monday, 20th of March, which is not tomorrow, the Monday after, we will be having Holy Mass service every day from Monday to Friday in this church. And it's actually, according to the old Julian calendar, it's the mid-Lent week. It's halfway, according to the old calendar, it's halfway. So we'll be having Holy Mass services from Monday to Friday, every single day. Uh, every day, Monday to Friday at 10 a.m., except for Wednesday, the 22nd of March, it will be 5 p.m. And the Wednesday is the heart of the mid-Lent, is the center of the mid-Lent, that Wednesday. So every other day it's 10 a.m., except Wednesday, the 22nd of March, it will be 5 p.m. instead of 10 a.m. And we'll do the same for the Passion Week, the last week, from Monday to Thursday, uh, every day at 10 a.m. Please pray for this project. Um, we want to see if it's within the Lord's will. We are in the process of establishing a primary school and a high school later on. The primary school we wish to establish we are praying that it can be built on the premises of this church. Um, it will cater for, I don't know, up to maybe 300 students, we're hoping. So um, if any mom and dad that have children within that age bracket for a primary school, we have a survey. If you can fill it out, if you are seriously thinking, if the school is built, you would enroll your child in the school. If you are thinking serious about this, please take a survey. There is a hard copy in the foyer, or you can uh, visit the church Facebook, Christ the Good Shepherd Church Facebook, and there is a link there. Click on it, fill the survey online, and send it to us online. So you can either get a hard copy or do it online through the church Facebook, Christ the Good Shepherd Church Facebook. This is for the primary school and then later on will be a high school as well. We are working on that. Um, I'm pushing for it as much and as hard as I really can by the grace of God, our Lord. So let's pray for this to come into wishing. Um, the other thing is uh, we are in the process of establishing a youth ministry in the church here, if you are 18 plus, 18 years of age plus, I urge you, I encourage you, I beg you to enroll and be part of this youth ministry we are about to commence. Um, we will have the first meeting on Saturday, the 22nd of April, at 10.30 a.m. here in the church. That will be the first meeting. It will be on Saturday, the 22nd of April, at 10.30 a.m. I am begging every young man and every young woman, if you are 18 plus, please come, enroll, put your name down, and be here on the 22nd of April 
which is a Saturday at 10.30 a.m. sharp. There is a lot of things we wish to, to do for our youth. We want to equip you. We want to build you up in the love of Christ. When you go and face the world, the Lord is going to be your support and your sustainability. Please enroll and be part of this youth ministry. We have so many things that we wish to implement. My beloved, just this announcement um, of the departed souls. It has been requested and asked of us to mention this name during the Holy Mass service and also uh, in public as well. Um, this is coming from uh, our beloved Elias and his family uh, here in Sydney. They wish to um, mention the name of, the, of their beloved, the late uncle, uh, Bassam Sassin whose funeral is being actually fulfilled today uh, as we speak, and I believe that is in Lebanon, correct? So it is Bassam Sassin's funeral today in Lebanon, and our beloved Elias um, asked uh, that his name to be mentioned. And also, um, um, we say something uh, for his departed soul, uh, however, what we are going to say is going to be in Aramaic uh, because um, the melody and the words, it's very hard to convert it into English. So we're going to try and say something in Aramaic. So if you don't understand what we're going to say, my sincere apologies. All of Bassam Sassin in his kingdom, and may he grant him his glory in the second coming, and put him at his right hand in his glory, and may the Lord give us a portion with them at the end. May God rest his soul, my dear Elias, and the whole family. Uh, our condolences to the entire family, and may God comfort your troubled hearts give you the strength, the courage, the faith, the love to always carry on, even in troublesome times, glorifying your Lord Jesus and saying, the Lord has given, the Lord has taken, let the name of the Lord be blessed always. Amen. Okay, our session for the day, God bless you.